Now, a new trend in retro gaming is uh, using FPGAs to uh, replace old consoles, old hardware. And it's probably going to be the future of retro gaming because this hardware is not going to last forever. So we have to find alternatives to it. Uh, it is important to keep it alive, but at the end of the day, nothing can last forever. So one of the first people to jump on the scene was Retro USB. And a couple of years ago, they came out with this, uh, the Retro AVS. It is a NES clone console, sort of, but kind of a hardware emulator at the same time. Uh, you have a Famicom slot over here. You can slide in NES games over here. And it had a four ports, four controller ports in the front to support games that did that. It had original uh, NES power and reset buttons. So it had a bit of a legit feeling to it. Also, it has HDMI out, which delivers 720p, powered by USB uh, type B, I believe, or about mini USB. I'll put the correction on screen. And also a Famicom expansion port, so you can plug into things like the Famicom disk system, the keyboards, things like that. Um, great piece of kit, uh, awesome hardware. It does connect to... Uh, uh, NES age forms, I believe. Uh, don't quote me on that. And uh, you can post your high scores on there. I don't do any of that. And uh, But the one cool thing is you connect this to your computer, you can update the firmware. Uh, but it's not exactly clear. It doesn't really come with directions on how to do that. There are a couple form posts that you can look up. But I just figured I would do this video to show you guys how to update your form, uh, how to update your firmware. And I checked, and as of February 2017, they're still working on updates. They come out very few and far between, but they are working on updates and uh, trying to expand the feature set and uh, things like that on this. So it's still being supported, which is great. It's just few and far between. I don't think it's the biggest team in the world working on this. So just be patient. Um, there are other alternatives like the Analog NT Mini but that's crazy expensive it's about twice the cost of this and you know for budget i think this is about uh, i don't know the price I'll, pro, I'll you'll probably see it on the website but yeah let's get to the tutorial okay guys so here's how to change your uh firmware on your retro avs now you might be wondering why do i want to upgrade my firmware my original nintendo did not have firmware so why am I updating it on this remake version? Well, it's using an FPGA, so you do want to make slight tweaks to it. and You can add features and make it better than the way it was in 1985. So uh, that's one reason why. And uh, secondly is uh, if you do run homebrews, uh, like when I did my little Final Fantasy overview, Final Fantasy VII, there were some, you know, there were some issues with it. Uh, 1.2 is out of beta now, so there's no changes made. Uh, so it adds stuff like palette selecting, FDS menu buttons, which I'm not sure what that is, uh, support for Greatest 2, Final Fantasy 7, Pokemon Yellow, PAL, uh, it just says PAL games, doesn't really say what, always in the TMC menus, menu reset scroll, uh, power pack, uh, and then it just got stable icons, uh, PAL frame sequencer, and regs 2, 3, FX. I'm not sure what a lot of that stuff is, but there are things that you want to add to the game or stuff that you might want to change and it, it's not 100% because it's not the actual hardware so it's just to make it a little bit more fine-tuned so you're going to go to the website and you want to download the firmware uh, obviously the most recent version and you want to download uh, the software for the scoreboard and console updater good now I'm just going to open up that with um, WinRoar, but you can use whatever uh, zip program you do. And at this point, you're going to want to plug in your retro AVS to your computer using the USB cord that was provided. And you just want to power it on. You just hit the power button. There you go. So now we're going to go to uh, transfer, upgrade firmware. Please excuse all this uh, <laughs> noise my computer is making. And I want to go over to my uh, downloads. I have to find the, the right folder for it though because I have a pretty extensive file system on my computer. So here we go. That's the one I downloaded. Open. And it's racing and restarting. 
And so it's pretty cool. There's no install required for this program. It's just, a, it's just an executable that you can just start using. And if you do want to do the score, whole scoreboard thing, you can. Uh, I'm not really super into it, but it's a cool feature. I don't like having my uh, Ritual AVS plugged into my computer as the way for it to get power. It's just inconvenient for my setup. If I had a computer a little bit closer to my game, this to my gaming stuff, maybe I would do it. But it's it's like probably like 30 feet away, and I just don't feel like running the wire for it. So as you can see, it's just uh, doing that right now. It's on 11 out of 16, and it's pretty easy. Um, even for uh, th this, you know, it's it's nice. Uh, it does take about what this 30 seconds maybe. I'm just gonna wait for that to finish, and it's gonna restart, and it's done. So that's all you have to do, and now you are all set up. So I, I don't have any of my stuff connected or anything like that, but uh, yeah, that's that's basically it. So we're just gonna close out over here, and I don't know if you have to eject it or not. No, I'm just gonna unplug. Oh, maybe I'll just power it off, then unplug. And that is it. Once you disconnect, you can set it back up on your TV or however you do it and just start playing. Uh, this uh, this patch particularly had some support for Final Fantasy VII. And I believe in some previous videos I mentioned that my copy of Final Fantasy VII for the NES was not very good. I had complaints about the, uh, the graphical errors that were in it and I blamed it on it being from Alibaba. But hopefully this fixes it. I haven't actually tried it yet. Because I want to make sure I got this video guys out, to, this video out to you guys on time, but uh, yeah, uh, definitely something I want to give it a try. It also said that it has different color palettes, which I know is uh, something that other FPGAs have worked in. Uh, I haven't tested that out either, because uh, again, I want to get this video out to you. But they added some cool things, and I cannot wait to see what else they add to this console. Uh, I'll probably be doing a long-term review of this soon, just because. Uh, people are trying to get more into the FPGAs and they should be more informed on the different options that are out there. Uh, so tell me guys what you think of this video. Do you guys run an FPGA style system? Do you just run original hardware? What are your opinions on it? Uh, and uh, or do you have any questions about it? Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.